A few years ago, I made a video arguing that Nia Jax was a danger to the other women on the roster. At the time, she'd been getting away with injuring people for literally years. In that video, I called for Nia Jax to be fired, and for good reason. In 2017, she gave a shoulder injury to Bailey. That injury was so bad that WWE had to cancel Bailey's match against Alexa Bliss at SummerSlam. <laughs> In 2018, she gave Ember Moon an elbow injury during the Royal Rumble match, and then later in the year, she punched Becky Lynch so hard that she ended up with a broken nose and a concussion. In 2020, Jax injured Kyrie Sane after being thrown into the ring steps. She threw Sane so hard, she ended up splitting her head open on impact. She practically dropped Charlotte Flair on her head during a match on Raw. Flair got so frustrated with Jax that she slapped her for real and the two had a very tense moment live on TV. That's not even a complete list by the way. Zelina Vega, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke also all fell victim to Dangerous Nia during that first run in the company. To me, it defied all logic that she was still employed despite being one of the sloppiest wrestlers of all time. WWE did eventually release her in November 2021, but that was a part of a mass release of wrestlers, and Jax herself would later claim that she actually asked for her release so she could focus on improving her mental health at the time. Either way, she wasn't fired due to being dangerous in the ring, and later we found out why. In an interview, Jax revealed that she was one of Vince McMahon's favourite girls. I call myself a Vince girl. Whatever match he wants to put me in, whatever opponent, whatever kind of weird gimmick he wants me to do, I'm just like, yeah, whatever you want. It's my job, you know? I've always had a good relationship with Vince. Now it all made sense. But hey, one way or the other, she was gone from the company and I was pretty damn happy about that. At the 2023 Royal Rumble, I couldn't believe my eyes when Nia Jax entered at number 30. Luckily, it just seemed to be a one-off, and we didn't see her again for several months, but of course, she did return to WWE in a full-time capacity in September 2023, and it seemed to me like a boneheaded decision, especially since Vince was supposedly no longer running WWE, why was she rehired? Well, there's been some rumours that Nia's family ties with The Rock might have had something to do with her coming back on board, but we can't prove that for sure, and rumours also say that she might be one of Triple H's teacher's pets too, but we can't prove that either. When she attacked Rhea Ripley, who was the women's champion at the time, it became obvious that WWE were going to push her hard. At Crown Jewel in November, she wrestled in a fatal five-way match, and then she went on a winning streak. Over that first few months of having Nia back in WWE, I have to admit that she slowly started to turn me around as a fan. I never thought I'd see the day, but in almost every way, she was massively improved. During her time away from WWE, it was reported that Jax had been training with Natalia and her husband Tyson Kidd, as well as alongside Charlotte. She must have been working really hard with those guys to make this kind of improvement. Was she perfect? No. Some of her moves still concern me, including that bonsai drop that she caused the Annihilator she managed to give Rhea Ripley some bruised ribs during her return appearance, for example. But, knock on wood, the reports of injuries this time around have been few and far between. Let's take a look at some of Nia's biggest matches since she came back to the company. She wrestled Becky Lynch at Raw Day 1, and this was where my perception really started to change. In the lead-up, Jax cut a promo where she said that she'd been the one to turn Lynch into the man all those years earlier, and Lynch obviously took exception to that. In my opinion, her promos are still weak, 
and that's an area that she really needs to work on. But the match itself was fantastic. Despite a few clunky spots here and there, I think she looked absolutely brilliant. She played the role of monster heel really well and she was totally believable, especially when it came to the finish. The finish saw Lynch avoiding the Annihilator before getting smashed in the face with a very effective looking punch. In the Royal Rumble match, she entered at number 19 and lasted for just over 20 minutes. A match against Rhea Ripley for the Women's World title came next at the Elimination Chamber. It was one thing having a great match on Raw Day 1 against Becky Lynch, but how would she perform in the main event of a premium live event in Australia in front of a stadium packed with 52,000 fans. It turned out that she handled it pretty damn well. The energy of the crowd was behind Ripley, who was the hometown hero during the contest, and that certainly helped make Nia seem like an even bigger heel than she already was. It wasn't a perfect match, there were a couple of botches early on, but I still really enjoyed it. Jax absolutely busted her ass and she did a great job of generating heat. Then it came to the Queen of the Ring to face Lyra Valkyria in the final match, with the winner of the tournament going on to face the Women's World Champion at SummerSlam. Out of all of her major matches since she came back, this one was one of the weakest. The pacing was too slow for my liking but it did continue to showcase Jax as a nasty heel. In the end, Jax executed an absolutely brutal looking annihilator to pick up the win and become the 2024 Queen of the Ring. The way things are going, I would be more than happy for Nia Jax to win the title at SummerSlam. For her to go on a tear as a monster heel world champion would be something new and interesting in the women's division. She can fill the role of big, nasty, reckless bully, something that's been really lacking on the female side of the roster, as long as she can do it without actually being reckless, of course. Say she goes on to win the world title and has a run with it for six months. What happens afterwards? Personally, I'd turn Piper Niven heel and have these two team up to destroy the other tag teams on the roster as a sort of monster heel tag team. She's also apparently best friends with Tiffany Stratton, so I think it would be an interesting dynamic to have them as a tag team on Raw too. Clearly, Nia took on board the issues that surrounded her last time she was in the company, and she's worked hard to correct those issues. Right now, I want Nia's push to continue, as long as her in-ring skills stay tight and she doesn't let old habits sneak back in. Because if she goes back to crushing people with her finisher or almost dropping them on their heads again, we're going to be back to square one. <laughs>